when when I'm guiding and I have to do a briefing and people don't listen to me and then after scuba diving they're like oh you're oh you're, you're actually you know what you're saying it's like yes why would you think I don't just because I'm a woman off gassing a scuba podcast with host Nick Hogel Sometimes it's not all puppies and ice cream. A lot of the time, the bat is swept under the rug and I forget that there is a not so pleasant face within this industry. The double-edged sword that is social media can at times over-romanticize and lead individuals to believe diving is a fairy tale land where all is amazing and wonderful. Rushed courses, asshole instructors, lack of standards, sexism, underpaid and overworked. In this episode, I speak with Nikki, an instructor in Spain. It was a rocky start, but she persevered through to find the love of the sport that so many of us share. I sit down with her as she brings me through the ups and downs, founding Bluefin Divers, Mi Moana, and her plans for the future to continue to create the change she wants to see. Please enjoy. Nikki, how are you doing this morning? You were just telling me you're slightly jet lagged. I am. It's it's early, but I'm, I'm getting there. I'm slowly getting out of the jet lag, but, but I'm okay. How are you? I am good. I am good. So you just traveled from where to where? So I went to, uh, so I, went, I live in Spain. I went to La Martinique, which is a small island in the Caribbean. That's where I started a cruise. And we, we visited about 10 different islands. So every day a different island. And then went back to La Martinique, stayed there for a few days, and then I flew back through Paris to Spain. So it's about okay. a five-hour difference with there and here, which during the day is nothing, but at night that's that it, it gets tricky because it's uh, I think it's it's earlier there. So um, I'm not tired yet. I'm not sleepy, and then in the morning it's very difficult to wake up. So that's fun. <laughs> Yes, yes, I uh, could only imagine, and I'll kind of be in that boat uh, next week. I'll be flying back to the United States, and uh, yeah, jet lag is always always a fun thing to deal with. But my first question I would love to ask you is: Tell me how and why you got into scuba diving. Tell me about that first breath. What led to that moment? Was it love at first breath? Was it, I absolutely hate this. I'm never doing this again. Was it somewhere in between? Tell me all about it. Uh, Well, it wasn't as magical as I expected it to be. It was actually horrible. It was a horrible experience. Basically, I was sort of forced to go into it with my mother. She was gifted an open water course by my dad. And then she said, no, I want her to do it with me. I want us to do it together. Um, Because my dad used to scuba dive back in like the 60s. So when I just came out. And um, so we started together and it was horrible. It was the worst experience ever. And looking back at it now, um, it just, it made me a better instructor because I know what not to do. It was a, it was a horrible experience. And for me, it was like a near death experience. It was horrible. And it was just, yeah, it was the worst thing of my life. And I I really never thought I'd still be here (laughs) scuba diving, but uh, along the, along the way, I, I fell in love with it eventually. Okay. Okay. What was, what was so, were you just not comfortable in the water or was it just the, the class in general? The thing is I've, I've always been very comfortable with water. I, you know, my, my parents sort of threw me into the water as soon as I was nearly born. Like I was just always in the water. I was uh, overweighted by my instructor and the instructor went up to the surface. This was my first of water dive. And in the abort course, that's about, I think that was like the second or third day. And I was, 13 and she weighted me with a weight that I would usually use now with a semi-dry so I was overweighted for a kid and so it was time to go up to finish a dive and she went up with my mom and I was stuck at the bottom and I couldn't get up and she was nowhere to be found and I was alone at 18 meters and I could not or no uh, maybe 12 meters I don't know but I, I just I couldn't get up and it was it was horrible because obviously as a little kid you panic I mean I would still panic now but you panic and I was thinking, okay, what's the procedure? I have to, you know, alarm someone or I have to take off my weight belt and then just shoot up. But then I'm scared because obviously then you just learn about DCS and your mind is like, I don't want bubbles. I don't want bubbles. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. That's, I would die if I have that. So 
you're just thinking, okay, what do I do? And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get someone's attention and no one's seeing me, no one's hearing me. And it's just, it was just a little bit horrible. So with my little legs, I'm kicking, 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 can't get up. So eventually I had to do an emergency weight drop and, um, which is horrible for the first dive because it just makes you not want to dive anymore. And, um, and then I was blamed for it, which was not, I think the right response to it. But, um, anyways, at the end of it all, I pass. <laughs> I did the course. I don't know how, and I'm still here. Oh man, there's so much to unfold right there. That's a bummer, <laughs> huge bummer that that happened. Um, especially because how common that is in the industry for instruct. Like, I don't want. To, well, I guess I would say in, inexperienced instructors to just overweight students to be like, oh, they're not, yeah. they're not getting it. Let's just keep throwing weight on them. And for you to have an experience like that is I, I don't want to say common or I feel it's common, but um, it's like a lot of people have that bad first experience and then they won't come back to the sport. What made yep. you come back to the sport? Like, was it just kind of like, ah, oh, I, I guess I'll keep doing this because a, 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 an event like that, I feel would make most people be like, I am absolutely never doing this again. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really die for a long time after that. It was sort of my mom would force me like on holidays to, you know, go diving once. I would dive maybe once a year. What got me back into scuba diving was a job. I started as manager at a dive center when I was 16 because the boss was never around. He was looking for someone to sort of just do everything and anything. And I thought, you know what? I love a challenge. I don't have any experience. I don't know anything what I'm doing. I don't know how to make an invoice. I'll just do it. Let's see how it goes. And um, and that's when I did it. And I didn't love scuba diving. I, I really didn't like it. And the boss sort of rushed me from advanced through dive master, which didn't help because I didn't do anything of the of the courses. I didn't do anything. I didn't do any theory. I didn't do anything. He just sort of signed a paper and that was it, which later on I found out you can't really do. Found out later. And then I became a dive master and then horrible things happened which I'm sure we'll get into later and that's when I thought you know what I'm already here I'm gonna keep going I started working as a dive master and that's when I actually started enjoying scuba diving so it was later on <laughs> okay okay well but before I jump forward let me bring it back a little bit I don't know if you had said it but where did you get certified uh, I did everything here in Spain in the, in the oh, south of okay. Spain Everything, yeah, all the courses, everything. Okay, and that's where you started working. It started like your kind of foot in the industry, started working in the industry? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I didn't know back then that it was um, not as great and as amazing as people make it seem. But yeah, so I started working in it and I, I, I've worked for it now for about five years. And then I, I worked in some different countries, but I did mainly everything, courses, long-term work, everything here in Spain. Okay. Okay. What's the, what's the diving like over there? It's good. If you are from like Thailand or, you know, somewhere like out of Europe, then you won't think it's spectacular because there's better places in the world to dive, but it's really good. Um, it's simple. So it's good for courses and most places have like 18 meters maximum. So it's amazing for training and it's calm. It's a little bay. Most of the places and uh, we've got a lot of little life, like seahorses, new branch, octopus, we have a lot of them. But a lot of it is very little, so then you can also practice your buoyancy looking at these little things, which is good for training. And then we also have a lot of wrecks on the completely other side of, of Spain. We have a lot of wrecks. We have about 40 plus wrecks, which are all at different depths. So that's, again, is very good for, for training, for, for wreck diving. And also, if you just really like wrecks, you can you can see that and explore that. So there's there's a lot of different type of diving, types of diving. But again, if you're from places like Egypt or, or you know, a lot of times I have customers like, we just came from Egypt with the Red Sea and now we're going to come dive here. And I'm like, well, come back to the earth because it's not going to be that great. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> or like, <laughs> breathe. <laughs> um, so I have to sort of calm them down. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, and then I guess to, to jump back a little bit forward. So you started working at the shop, you, you felt that you kind of got rushed through the program. How was it when you first started as like a professional, I guess, like you completed, like how, how were the courses 
I guess b- before we jump there, how are the course? Like, how did you like the courses from advanced to rescue to to dive master? How did you find the courses, or was it just kind of br- were you breezing through because of of how you were being put through the course? I didn't like it. I I I, I didn't like scuba diving. I didn't like any aspect of it because yeah, I was I was rushed through it because the dive sensor needed dive masters. And they thought, you know what, if we'll rush her to dive master, then she'll have more knowledge. And then if clients come in, she can answer more questions. It didn't really change anything from back when I was at Morta, but it, I didn't like it. It was, um, I mean, this is, it's, it's very negative and I don't want to be negative because now I'm not. But at the time, I just, I, I the thing is, I, I, I never went scuba diving for fun because I didn't like it. So for me, scuba diving was immediately associated with I have to do something or it's a training or something because I was used to the open water course. And then when I did advanced rescue dive master, dive master was when I actually started doing skills and things because it was with a different instructor who was hired to come into the dive center, which I still have very good contact with. Um, So it wasn't the boss, the owner who did the courses. So that was the first course I actually sat down and had to do things. So advanced rescue, I mean, I can't, I couldn't say I liked it because I didn't do anything. And then the dive master was when I started learning more about the theory behind it. And of course, you sort of get thrown into the deep end, because if you don't have that background of the other knowledge, it's sort of a lot in one. It's all, you know, information, information, information. So it was very stressful. I was still at school. I was 17 when I started the course. Yes, not allowed. I found out later on. So I was still in school and it was uh, combined with exams. It was very stressful. And then, of course, the, the stress tests, which were just horrible, horrible. And uh, I just, I hated it. But yeah, I, I, I managed to get through it somehow. Well, I'm, um, now it's like, I'm real curious, because so when, when was it, when did it start to turn around for you to where, because I mean, you've at this point where you're at now, there had to have been, was it like a light bulb moment or was it like a gradual transition it was very gradual. I started working at different places and a little bit for myself as well. Obviously, with social media nowadays, you can just say, hey, do you want to come scuba diving here? I'll take you. And that's certainly also when the idea started coming into my head of, okay, I have to open up something for my own. But that's way in the future. But yeah, that's when I started working for this and I started actually guiding and, and, and you know, scuba diving more and more. And I started reaching the, I don't know, 50, 60 dives. All standards were, were breached. Um, I think with the dive master, you need to have 60 dive when when you end it. Well, I didn't. I had far. I was very far from 60. But anyways, when I started diving more and more, and I started also seeing how it affected other people, it started becoming less normal and more of wow, I'm actually doing this. I'm underwater. I'm I'm interacting with creation with animals, and no one, you know, no one above water can understand that except if you actually have been underwater and when I started seeing also how it affected other people it's when I started thinking and stopping and thinking okay this might actually be something really special I'm doing hold on let me have a look at this and that's when I started thinking and saying okay it's actually quite weird you're breathing underwater that, that's weird <laughs> this is a strange thing I'm doing and it's very special <laughs> And that's when it, it sort of gradually started, but it, it was a very gradual, very slow, it was slope and um, it, it took a lot of time. Okay. Okay. And so as, as the, the love started coming in, the love started creeping in and you started enjoying it more and, and you kind of mentioned, I guess a little bit ago, it was like, oh, I should, I should do something for myself. Is that kind of when the idea of opening something of your own started or was it? Was that further down the line? Uh, it was a little bit further. It did start. I did start thinking about how can I make this something for myself where I don't have to work for a boss because I sort of always planted in my head, I'm going to be my own boss someday. And yeah, but further down, I mean, when I started working for more people and I started realizing how petty standards are just completely ignored. I mean, they sort of take it as a suggestion instead of a rule. That's when I thought, okay, why don't I, you know, it's a win-win situation. I do what I want to do, which is scuba diving. I want to be my own boss and I want to make a place where I can show that standards are rules and it's safety at the end of the day. Scuba diving is, it can be a dangerous sport if not done correctly. 
and we are dealing sometimes with a life or death situation because it can cause death if not done properly. And then if you then look around and see how people are treating the standards and not caring about them and just sort of doing whatever they want to do, I thought, okay, I, I need to I need to be the person to make a change in this. Okay, okay. And then tell me tell me more about blue bluefin divers. When did it start? How many people? Where is it located? Tell me, tell me all about it. and why bluefin? Why not red fin or orange fin or black fin? Tell me why why bluefin? Well, simple because my fins are blue. <laughs> That's it. And my favorite color is blue. And I thought, okay, <laughs> bluefin. I like it. I mean, it, it rolls off the tongue, you know. And and I love I love the color blue and the ocean is blue and it just it connected. It just I thought it makes sense. Now that you now that you ask me, I'm starting to realize it doesn't. There's no reason to it. It's just no, no. Just, it's great. It's absolutely great. I actually have yeah, blue fins too. <laughs> oh well, there you go. There you yeah. go. Now you have to come school diving with me. Okay. Yeah. Now that's why. That's it. <laughs> so um, when I started the instructor course, I started thinking about how can I make this dream a possibility. And now I was, I, I think I had just turned nineteen when I started the course. So obviously I was very young, and I had to. Well, I'm still young. I, I have not, I'm 20. I'm not even turned 21 yet. I, I had to sort of realize, okay, this is going to be a challenge. I've already challenged with people who think, okay, if you're young, you don't know anything. And especially if you're a woman, like, well, you have no knowledge. Um, I've sort of already had to deal with that. And now I'm, I'm going to have to deal with it even more. I can't just go, okay, here is someone else for you to talk to. No, now I'm going to have to do it because I'm the boss, sort of. So I had to sort of, uh, accept that I'm going to struggle a lot and people are not going to like what I'm doing. And it came true. I mean, there's a lot of, of slander. There's a lot of, there's many lies. There's a lot of gossip in the diving industry here in Spain. And I went through a rough time when I, I left the place I was working at. Um, I think they became very angry. And for about two, three years, I had to sort of recover my reputation and go to each person I knew and said listen whatever they told you it's not true I'm not aggressive to to people I'm not stalking anyone I'm not doing anything illegal I'm not doing what they're saying uh I'm just focusing on myself and I hope that you will see that and then slowly I started getting my reputation back but it's still every day a struggle because every day there's there's lies out there and there's um yeah it's a struggle but that's that's in the I'm, I'm completely going off topic uh, during the instructor course that's when I, I I thought okay I'm gonna do this so I became an instructor I announced everyone this is what I'm gonna do and of course that's also when the negativity started but um that's when bluefin divers was created I wanted a place that was focused on safety on the environment and on more positivity <laughs> to bring more positivity into the world because it needed it and um it's still very small. It's a starting business. We're located here in, in Malaga, in, in Spain. It's um it's very small. I've only got freelancers for me at the moment because a lot of it I can do myself. So I'd rather do it myself and, you know, be underwater than sort of send someone else to do it because I, I want to be underwater. Why can't I do it? I can do it myself. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, it's only small. It's just started. But um, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a good project down the line. I I, don't, I definitely don't think that you were going off of topic because unfortunately that is something that we do see in the industry is there is a lot of competitiveness and then that competitiveness can lead to just really unpleasant, I, I don't know how to really describe it, but just really like unpleasant situations. So that's a bummer that you had to go through something like that just because it, it, it really is, there, there is a lot of it out there. So, well, I'm glad that you were able to overcome that. And, and that's a bummer to hear you're still struggling to overcome that. But it seems like you are, though, you know, you're, you're getting your, your shop going. Um, it's the thing is, I think not, I think a lot of people are romanticizing the industry on social media. And I think social media is great. And it's amazing. But it's not that great. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, I burst everyone's bubble. The scuba diving industry is not great. As you said, there's a lot of competition. That's it. And people are mean. <laughs> I think in every okay, I think in every sector 
like in, in every work that there, there's 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 you know people who are rude and you know will try and get your customers in their shop and that's fine but the scuba diving industry is mean there's a lot of mean people and um and if you are not strong like myself who is a very I'm, I'm a very weak person if someone shouts at me I'm crying if you then hear that people who you were very close with and who you were you know best friends with then have now started calling everyone you know and telling them what a horrible person you are what a snake you are and pff, all sorts of lies it's like oh that sort of people were they? okay that's 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 good to know so yeah, I'm not a strong person mentally and I, I was very affected by it, still am, especially when I hear, you know, when people call me and say, guess what they said now? It's like, oh, great. It's a, it's a struggle and it um, it has kept me from growing because it, it's made me very weak, but it'll stop someday, hopefully. Um, I have my social media platform now where I like to share content that's close to the heart to my heart and I, I'll make a video one day and, and, and share the truth and share the real story and if people want to listen then then great <sighs> I I I hate to say it but you you're right it is it is no it is true though and and it is glamorized you know especially the social media side of it it's very you know social media in general is I think there's like a huge uh, thing going on in the United States right now with social media platforms and just, I don't know, I, I don't know the full extent of it, but it is, there is a lot of glamorization. I don't know if that's yeah. the right word. Um, yeah. But still yeah. learning my words over here. <laughs> uh, Same. Yeah. <laughs> but there is a lot of glamour to it. And, and unfortunately, there, you know, I, to be honest, I don't know if there is an outlet that really does show the not so great side of the industry. And that is a bummer. So, I mean, ha being a voice for it is probably not going to get you all the friends out there, but it is something that definitely needs to be said though. Right. You know, definitely. and, and yeah, definitely. so I appreciate you saying something about it because <laughs> it there, you know, there's hints of it. But at the end of the day, yeah. it's one of those things that's just kind of swept under the rug. So, I mean, yeah, thank you very much for saying something. Because e even me, I kind of don't want to admit it, but I do know it's there. So, yeah, and a, a lot of people want to sort of hide from it. I mean, I will. The thing is, I'm not scared to say it. And when I see that people, for instance, Paddy, right, on their Instagram, they're very much like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, which is fair enough because they're a big industry. They need to be very positive about the industry they're in. Because if they now start saying it's horrible and no one's going to dive anymore, we lose all our customers. So, okay. But sometimes I'll, I'll comment something here and then. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll say what's on my mind and I know it's not nice, but at uh, nine and 10 times it's deleted or it's just not commented on, it's sort of ignored. And then other people will come and say, actually, what she's saying is true. And um, But people will then sort of ignore it or, you know. I, it the last video I commented something on was about Women's Day, I think it was, when Paddy Women's Day, uh, which was already last year. It was about how, you know, great this industry is and how amazing and how more women need to start scuba diving, amazing. And I commented something along the lines of, well, if there was less negativity, less slander, I'm sure when would, more women would actually join, but unfortunately that's not the case, and it just got ignored. It's got it's got it got deleted. It got just you know sort of put away. Like no no one wants to see that. So the, definitely this it's it's difficult on this platform to say the truth, but I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> I'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah no no for sure and and. Um, even a while back, I, I can't remember the exact date, but I did have a, uh, a round table where I got a group together and the topic was toxicity in the scuba industry. Mm. And, um, I was planning and I still am. And, and, you know, hopefully you might be interested is another thing that is kind of, I, I don't want to say hidden, but maybe not talked about as much as it should be is sexism in the industry. And I mean, it's, yeah. you know, that, that goes across yeah. all platforms, all businesses. Yeah. And that's something yeah. that needs to definitely be speaked about more. And 
flat out it sucks like it it, it sucks and and, yep. and I'll even be honest because I don't really even know how to approach that subject sometimes because I'm like okay yep. I um I'm on one side obviously of the sexes so you know I can give my my opinions on how I view it but I've never actually yep. directly had to deal with it so I feel yep. like giving a voice to somebody that has dealt with it should be so no I re- I really do need to uh, I I need to get that round table going um and and so thank you because it, it this is something that needs to be spoken about more yeah there's a lot of um a lot of sexism and a, and a lot of people don't expect women to be good divers and it's it's weird because what does our gender have to do with of course it has to do with you know your breath consumption your weight whatever but with the actual part of scuba diving and the way you you you, f- you think it and your buoyancy that has nothing to do with who you are as a person. It's, it has to do with your skill, with how long you've been doing this, with you know how how you can do certain things, and the fact that people are they. So when when I'm guiding and I have to do a briefing and people don't listen to me, and then after scuba diving they're like, oh you're oh you you're actually you know what you're saying. It's like yes. Why would you think I don't? just because I'm a woman. Why Why do you think I don't know what I'm... Like, if, if I didn't know about this subject, I wouldn't be here guiding you, but I am. And it's it's very, it's very frustrating. And when I, I... The thing is, it's usually... Nine out of ten times it's men, but sometimes it's even women. And it's because of their how toxic they are. And it's not all, woohoo, women support each other. Not at all. It's not at all like that in the industry. And it's it's... To be honest, I've had more support from men than women because they usually get jealous because you get close to the boss or whatever they get jealous about. So if I'm alone on a boat, like I see only a woman with 30 men and they're saying how amazing is that I carry my own equipment? It's like, why would I not? <laughs> you know, why are... Because, and they're like, oh, because other women, they want us to do it. Okay, well then it's women's fault sometimes. You know, it's 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 not it's not even all time. It's not always men. We can't always blame men. Man, it's a lot of times it's women's fault. And I think if this is a subject that's spoken more about, and everyone does something, and not just say, "Oh, it's the men's fault." No, if everyone does something about it, that's when an actual change will happen. But that's not going to happen because not a hundred percent of people will do something about it. Maybe twenty percent or thirty percent of people will see the reality and say. Oh, we need to stop this, but it's it's so it's a very long process to eliminate sexism and toxicity out of the industry, and honestly, I don't know when it's going to happen, but hopefully, people like yourself who want to share more of the realities will cause a change in some places, and that's where it has to start. Um, but it's going to be a long, a long way because um, not a lot of people want to change. I'm so negative. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. It's not at all. It's, it's, these are the, the, the things that need to be talked about and it's not about mm-hmm. being negative. It's, it's about shining light on yeah. a situation that is just kept in the dark far too much. Yep. So if anything, yep. thank you. Like this is, this is huge because, you know, and, and, and this is actually, I mean, this is one of the biggest reasons for my well there's a lot of different reasons but this is a huge reason for the podcast because you coming on here and speaking out and speaking up is you know it's you know even if one or two or three other people hear about it and then they spread the word that's how it all starts right so yeah. you heard it it started here on off gassing so this needs to become the world platform now <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, no, and, and, and no, that's, that's a great, you know, that's a great thing to shine a light on the subject because it, it, it is, you know, I've heard it a few times, more than a few times throughout the podcast. And, um, it, it is something that definitely needs to be spoken about more. So, so thank you. I, I feel like I should keep going, but I, I do have a couple questions. The, instructor when you did your your idc at that point i'm assuming you kind of knew that there was a love there for you to pursue wanting to go into the instructor program yeah i i sort of got my love during the dive master uh, course or dive master working as a dive master better said and then i thought well i've come this far i need to keep going first of all 
Second of all, I was already planning on becoming an instructor because the place where I was working at was sort of forcing me through the courses. So for them, the most logical next step was to become an instructor. So I was already preparing for that mentally. And then when I left that place because of a lot of reasons, uh, I thought, well, it's still in my plan. So I still want to do it. Um, so it was love for the industry. The fact that it was already, already part of my plan, I had already prepared for it. And because I wanted to show people that you could be an instructor, do it in a safe way, following standards, following rules, and still make your money and still have fun and still give people a good experience. So it was it was sort of three reasons all in one. And then I found these course directors, which are amazing, amazing people and who, you know, we were a group, but they taught us individually how to become the best version of yourself as an instructor. And uh, they were amazing. And they guided me through the whole process of having to relearn everything I was taught because everything was wrong. Everything that I knew was just wrong. And they sort of had to take me from open water to dive master in like two weeks and then just redo everything, redo all my theory. And I had questions about everything because I mean, I didn't even know what an RDP was. Like I had no idea what anything was. And so every time or compass, I'd only use, I only done navigation maybe once in my life during the dive master. So they had to reteach everything. And sometimes they were with, you know, with their hands on their head, like, how do you not know this? This is open water level. I'm like, I don't know. Sorry. So they sort of had to redo everything, but they were very patient. And um, I became an instructor somehow. Don't ask me how. Uh, most stressful weekend of my life, but we got there. And um, and that's when I started working more and more in the industry. Okay. Okay. So with Bluefin Divers, and, and so I'm actually quite embarrassed to say this, um, so when I was, I was looking at the, the website and then I came across me Moana and I was like, oh, okay. I started reading about it. And I, like literally the first thing that you have on there, cause I've obviously seen Moana for everybody out there. I've obviously seen it, <laughs> but when it was like, um, me Moana means Moana means ocean. And I was like, it means ocean. I didn't not, I didn't know that. <laughs> Or maybe I'd heard it and then it just kind of like went in one and then yeah. right out the other. But I was like, oh, man, that means ocean. OK, my 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 ocean. Right. Me, my yeah. uh, right. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. So kind of embarrassed to say that because I've seen Moana a few different times. Obviously, there's like certain movies, <laughs> Disney movies you have to watch. Obviously, uh, Moana is one of them. Nemo is another one. And, and I'll, yeah. I'm actually kind of embarrassed to say that is it took me. I think I saw Nemo like or Finding Nemo um, probably like five years after it came out. Like that's how that's just how bad I am with movies in general. <laughs> how dare you? But yeah, you, you I know. I know. Again. Yes. You yes. Eventually okay. I came around. But uh, t- tell me more about Me Moana. So Me Moana is an organization I started. I co-founded with my mother in 2019. We, we saw, obviously, there was a big issue with, with plastic pollution. I mean, we're still seeing it nowadays. But we thought, okay, we're not doing anything to stop this. And, of course, you know, it's a small group of people. We're not going to make a huge change. But we wanted to start somewhere. And there were no organizations or anything along the coast in back, in, back in those days that, that, that organized anything like what we do. Because we don't only just clean the beach, we also go underwater. So we we, ha- we are sort of launching in from two places. We're going on the beach and cleaning it there. And we're going underwater and cleaning it there. So it's two places at once. So we started with that. We started as a very small group. But it, I mean, it's grown every single time. And we do cleanups every month. And then we usually have about 10, 11 divers, volunteers, who, who give up their day and, and, and come and help us. And of course, their money, because tanks are expensive. And then we have about 100 to 150 volunteers, sometimes more, sometimes about 200, who will come on the beach and who will clean with us the beach for about an hour, hour and a half. And then we sort everything out. So we separate everything we find, we classify it. And then most of it, 99% gets taken by the town hall. And the government has multiple places in Spain called Punto Limpio. And that's where everything goes to get recycled or burned or sort of put together. You know, it's where the next steps are done. 
So most of it goes there and then some that we can recycle, we keep and we make jewellery from. So we sort of cut it by hand and then we put it into plant-based raisin and then we make jewellery. And we focus a lot on education. A lot of the times there's students, there's the schools that are cleanups. And so last time we had 150 students or 200 students uh, together with their teachers. And then they come and we educate them. We give a presentation and then they go and clean the beach. And uh, we go to schools to educate um, and to give presentations. So we've got educational programs, which take seven weeks and they can do at school. So we're really focusing on the education part because we think that that's the next generation and we're going to have to implement education somehow because at school it's not talked about. I mean, we, we, we don't have anything, any classes or anything that has to do with pollution here in school. We have sexology and drugs and how not to use them. And that's about it. And so it's like pollution is like, huh, well, it doesn't exist. So we were, we were sort of like, OK, well, let's let's make a change here. And um, so we're doing a lot. Uh, we hand out. I reduce, uh, uh, yeah, I reduce plastic certificates to establishments who are reducing the, their their footprint, and we're doing a lot of things. But it's um, yeah, we were trying to implement a little bit of education and consciousness to people. Long story. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a great story. <laughs> uh, so uh, just curious. So almost obviously, you're still diving with your mother, starting the business with her. Did she think that? Because she obviously must have known that you didn't like it at the beginning. So is she kind of like surprised to see how far you've brought it? Yeah, she, um, I mean, she had a very similar horrible experience uh, during that same course. Um, so for her, it was, I mean, she, she, but she did have a love for it already since she, she started to like have the, like the first breath, like the first time she went on the water, she was like, okay, I love this. So she already had that love. So she, sort of forced me to keep going and she was the one that would go okay let's go scuba diving on holidays so I'd be like no I don't want to um she would take me and, and, and dump me under water and just push me down so she is the whole reason why I'm still here and um she was very the thing is that the, the person who hired me he was known to both of us so she knew him as well so I mean it was no surprise at some point that I started working there because she thought okay she's coming at that age where she's gonna you know, want a job at some point. And I knew that he had job offers. So it was it was sort of logical. At some point we would come together and say, okay, I'll start working there. So she already knew. She the thing is she can foretell the future sometimes. She knows. She's like, my what is this is gonna happen? And a year later it happens. She is just I don't know what it is, but she just knows. She just knows things. She can sense it. So she knew it was going to happen at some point. And then I became dive master. She's like, yeah, you're going to go for it. And uh, then I told her, well, my goal is to become a course director in five years. She was like, yeah, I know. Oof, I already guessed. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, thanks. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's a, a, a goal to make course director? Yeah, I would, I really want to go for it. Um, I think if you want to make a change in the industry, then that is sort of the level you have to go to to at least have a voice and I think as an instructor you know I've now I've, I've noticed that if I sort of how do I say this if I say that something has happened which should not be allowed and the organization doesn't really care or they're like well it sounds like a you problem then it made me understand okay I need to become a higher level in order to actually be able to implement changes and that's okay that's I mean, there's so many instructors out there. Obviously, they can't reply to each and every one of them. But if I go to Paddy and I say, listen, there's an instructor here who is an alcoholic and it could actually be dangerous. And, you know, I've worked with him and, and, and this this could become a real issue. And they say, well, it sounds like you have a problem with him personally, so we can't do anything. It's like, OK, that's how it works. Right. So, yeah, then you have to go to a course director. Luckily, I know many and say, oh, there is this and this. Could you please go and tell Paddy? I don't want to keep doing that my whole life. So um, yeah, course director is definitely the end goal to um, to yeah to make it a, a safer a safer environment. So I became an instructor in twenty twenty. I think it was twenty twenty. God, time is flying by. Um, <laughs> twenty twenty, and 
Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I kind of went through, I, I think, well, at this point I am, I, I hold the rating of uh, the MSDT Master Scuba Diver Trainer. Is that what it, I think that's what it is. Yep. And um, uh, in the last basically 18 months since I moved to Malaysia, uh, I have not been able to teach. I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping, not even hoping, like I'm going to get back into teaching this year. But I took the last basically like 18 months off and um, at I was kind of bummed going into it, but one good thing that came out of it was I was able to further my own education uh, as a diver. So kind of take a step back from that instructor level and start taking classes. And kind of like you're saying when it, it like I was doing it for myself, right? So it wasn't like, oh, I'm yeah. doing, you know, I'm, I'm doing this to to reach this goal, to reach that goal. Well, I am, but it's more for myself. Is there any like goals or, or aspirations to kind of, take any classes for yourself and become that student again? Um, I definitely want to explore the tech side a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit, just to have a little bit of knowledge about what's going on on that side of the scuba diving, because I've, I've ever only done recreational. And I'm really, really eager to start doing something with coral restoration. I mean, I'm already doing it from land, but I really want to do it underwater. And of course, that's that's that you have to have a lot of knowledge about it. And just every time I see, like when I'm on vacation, I see a place where you can go with them and restore coral nine, ten times. I can't do it because of reasons. And I'm really eager to. And I know there's one organization here in, in Spain who um, who do it and they're, they're planting coral. But yeah, you need to have all these certificates and you need to have so much knowledge and so much. But it's um, I think I think those are the two first places I want to explore a little bit. So the tech side a little bit and yeah, and, and coral restoration. You know, what's funny is the the tech side. I felt like I was literally in the same boat. I'm like, yeah, I'll just kind of try this. But it's it gets I think like a lot of things in scuba, once you start venturing down that route, it just becomes more addictive. And you're like, well, what's what's yeah. around that next corner? Because uh, one thing yeah. that I have been aggressively trying to stay away from just because it's I feel like it's just I mean, tech tech diving when you start getting into that the the costs just start going up but i i really because i enjoy land photography and i'm like oh it'd be amazing to get into underwater photography but it's just you start looking at the price of everything and i'm like yeah i think i need to hold off because if i'm trying to do technical diving for underwater photography it's like just yeah i'll 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 (laughs) maybe if if you know some uh some listener out there has their own company and they want to sponsor me as an underwater photographer. I would, I would this is your chance. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> self-promotion. Woo. I know. I know. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely horrible self-promotion. And I, I, I need to get That's a fair. little bit better. So my, my last couple questions I want to throw out at you is what are some future dive destinations you have planned or you just got back on a trip? Is there any other ones on the books or something that you're thinking about? So unfortunately I have to work to get some money again. Um, so I, I can't have anything on, on mine right now, but I do try and visit Egypt at least once every two years, at least. And last time was two years ago so I think it's time again to go but no but I I know some people there with 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 boats and who always need instructors who speak perfect English and Dutch and Spanish so I I usually go to Egypt to um Horgada to um to help out on on the boat and to work a little bit there um I've been doing it for a few seasons now and yeah I'll probably go in again and do it there but I don't have anything on the planning aspect there's just a lot of places I want to visit Australia is at the top of the list and Bonaire is definitely up there as well. It'll happen when it happens. You know, I need to have the opportunity. And um, for now, I think I just have to uh, work again and um, try and get some money, get some money in, and then I can try and 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 see where I can go next. But I need to. Um, yeah, I I hate saving, but I have to. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think I I. It's not about me hating saving. I think savings hate me. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I get it. I get anytime, it. Anytime I start to save, it's just like boom, something needs to be bought. Uh, yeah. To just, just, just real quick, because I'm curious. 
I know a little bit about Egypt, but where is the area that you generally go to? What's the diving like? I mean, I've heard it's absolutely phenomenal, but just kind of tell me a little quick, quick thing about Egypt. Um, so the two dive sites I've mainly visited are, or the two cities are Sharm el Sheikh and Hurghada, which are the two main diving places. And the diving there is absolutely phenomenal. It's amazing. There's color everywhere. There's animals everywhere swimming around and it's it you know none of them are hiding which is just really good because here in spain a lot of them hide they're really scared and um yeah you have all types of animals sharks dolphins turtles what else do you have that i mean you have eels everywhere rays everywhere mantas everywhere there's just there's huge animals and there's very small ones so it's very varied and it's just just there's there's something for everyone there's loads of different depths um, you can go very deep to 40 meters to go visit a shipwreck. I think most are like 30 to 33 meters. Um, but then you can also stay shallow at like 12, 10 meters to look at the colors. So there's a huge variety. There's something for everyone. People are amazing. I must say, I do recommend bring your own dive computer because not all guides are very focused on having one even. Um, so I recommend either renting one or bring your own uh, dive computer. But apart from that, the people are amazing. The food is amazing. The views are amazing. And the diving is just out of this world. Awesome. So there's another check I have against savings because as soon as I get some savings, I'll definitely have to go visit there. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, but, yes. Uh, so I last, I have, uh, usually I'll end off on one question, but I do have two questions for you. The last or second to last question is somebody that has dealt with some pushback in the industry, such as yourself, what advice would you have for somebody that is dealing with the same thing? Because you you said earlier that you're not that strong. I would disagree because you would have given up if you if you were. If you Close. were not yeah, but you would you would have given up, right? So you didn't. So there's obviously that perseverance to push through. And somebody that might be dealing with that, what advice would you have for that person? I'd advise to visit multiple dive centers, so not focus on one, and then find the people who you want to get close to. So choose your association. Don't trust anyone on social media. Social media is full of lies. And of course, it's great for looking at videos of underwater, you know, underwater, underwater videos. But don't befriend people just because they're scuba divers. Don't you know become very close and and and, and personal with people just because they're scuba divers, uh, because you never know who they are behind the phone. And so I'd recommend just going to physical dive centers, meeting the people, spending time with them. And if you find one or two people in the in that dive center that are good association that will encourage you to keep going or to going for your goals or to help you, those people you have to get close to and stay close to. And if you can't find them in one place, you'll find them in the other. There's, there's, there's a lot of divers out there. So go to places and meet people and go on trips and talk to your buddy and talk to the people on the, on the boat and talk to the people there or on vacation. Just, just meet new people and broaden your association and then choose who you want to stay close to, but don't trust anyone on social media. Great advice. And then my last question for you is someone that's had the the similar beginnings as you where they are, because I feel like it happens to a lot of people where they're, they get into the sport or they try the sport. It's, they're just like, man, this is not necessarily for me. I don't know if I like this, but someone that kept pushing through, I mean, you, you're, you're doing it you started multiple businesses. This, you know, this is, it's amazing to see. So someone that is just kind of on the fence, like they're like, I don't know if I like this. There is something telling me to go forward, but because that is a breaking point and, and it sucks to see when people go one way and then they never get back into the sport again. So what advice would you have for that person that's maybe thinking of giving it up, but maybe wants to push through? I'd say just, Keep trying because of scuba diving, I mean, being underwater and breathing underwater is something amazing. And it's something unique. And it's something you can't do with any other sport. Of course, if, you know, you're going through it and you really, really don't like it. I mean, scuba diving is not for everyone. And that's okay. It's not, it's, I mean, it's, it's become sort of a taboo to say it. 
but it's okay. I mean, scuba diving doesn't have to be for everyone, but you have to try it in order to know. And if you don't give yourself the chance to discover it, then you can't really say it's not for you because you don't know. So I wouldn't stop at the open water course if it's been a bad experience, if you didn't like it, if you didn't enjoy it, that's okay. Find a different instructor, find a different dive center and do some dives and, and get some dives in and, and see how you feel. And if you don't want to advance and go into higher levels, that's okay. You don't have to. You can stay at open water if that's really what you want. I recommend to keep on going because there's more knowledge out there, which is more safety. But if you don't want to do it, that's okay. Just don't be scared to stop at a point where you feel comfortable and to say, okay, I want to keep going, but from here. And to to, to on, only stop if you have tried it, really tried it, and you really are convinced it's not for you. Nikki, I really, really want to thank you for coming on to the podcast today. This has been absolutely amazing. And I am going to get a round table going and I will send an invite to you. And actually, I'd like to work with you to try to invite some other people. Uh, but no, this has Let's been absolutely it. amazing to hear your story. And I really, really appreciate you coming on to the podcast today. Thank you very much. I'm sorry it's it's um, not as amazing as some people seem make it seem, but thank you very much for having me and, and, and sharing my story. Offcasting, a scuba podcast.